Uncertainty remains as to how many people will be marking the recent exam papers after thousands of teachers pulled out. Uh, let's check how these uh, developments are going to impact on marking of exams, uh, exam papers in the province of Guazulu Natal. Guazulu Natal has the largest number of learners who sat for matric exams. Uh, for more on this discussion, we're joined live uh, via Skype uh, by the province's education MEC, Guazi Mshengu. Uh, MEC, thank you uh, for availing yourself to SABC News this afternoon. Thank you. Afternoon to you and to the viewers of uh, four, four. So, a large number of markers refusing to come uh, to work to mark uh, at the marking venues in Gauteng. What's the situation uh, like in, in, in KZN? And of course, we have uh, the largest number of uh, matriculants who sat uh, for exams in your province. What can you tell us, sir? Well, in our province, uh, we think the situation is not that bad. Uh, we have uh, recruited 8,730 markers, and of that number, uh, only 102 have withdrawn uh, for various reasons. Others have tested positive, others are on quarantine or isolation, uh, others have indicated that they, they fear for their lives, and unfortunately, others have, have succumbed uh, to, to COVID-19. Uh, we, when we recruit markers, we make sure that we also have a, an, a, a list of, of the reserves, uh, if I can put it in that way. Okay. That is why it was easy for us to, res, to replace the 102 that have withdrawn. So the marking have started in earnest in the province of KwaZulu Natal. And uh, having made those replacements, uh, we're not experiencing other challenges. As well. Yeah, it seems, MEC, that you had planned uh, indeed uh, for the worst. Are your contingency measures uh, such that even if you were to have a whole lot more of those markers uh, pulling out so during the time that they've uh, started, that you'd be able to uh, kind of bridge that gap? Would you be able to uh, fill the gaps? I mean, it's quite a large number. You're saying 8,730 markers, you say, at this point that you have uh, in, in, in the province. Would you then be able to, in terms of your own contingency measures and your list of reserves, be able to continue regardless of what's to take place? Definitely. Uh, we, have we have had our systems uh, well in place uh, uh, as early as uh, November last year. So even if they are further withdrawals uh, because of different reasons, uh, we'll be able to replace them. And we don't anticipate a situation where Federal withdrawals may result or can result into into chaos, because uh, even on the list of reserves, there's still quite a number of teachers who are on that list, and they were going to monitor the situation daily so that whenever there is a withdrawal, we are able to replace that withdrawal immediately. Yeah. So we are quite comfortable that they uh, will proceed with marking um, without uh, further hassles. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, the issue of uh, back-to-school readiness, uh, MEC. I know your province and uh, your premier yourself and uh, the MEC for Health have been quite good at give, uh, giving us those uh, press briefing in terms of updating us um, of what's happening in, in, in the province. But I'm sure you would definitely be aware of the fact, MEC, that uh, some teacher unions have expressed uh, their concerns about uh, the f that uh, not all is 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 in order uh, for learners and teachers to to be going back to school. They've raised a number of issues uh, of concern, some of which were raised even last year. Really, um, how are these issues that are being raised by the various uh, um, uh, teacher unions being addressed, or have they already been addressed um, when we're talking about readiness for 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 back to school? And I mean, that's really just in a, you know in a couple of weeks, really. We, we are engaged in a very intense and detailed preparation for, for the opening of schools. Um, we are the largest uh, education system in the country with uh, 6,148 schools. And uh, we are expected to ensure that all those schools are ready to, to start teaching and learning on the very first day, which is the 27th uh, of, of, of January. Uh, as I speak, we have set up uh, teams, various teams, uh, to focus on different areas of, of preparations. Uh, part of the things that uh, we have done uh, is to make sure that all senior managers are back at work. Uh, even those who have had, um, we have taken long leaves, we have requested and agreed with them that they are going to cancel those leaves, uh, so that we are we are all focused on preparation for for the reopening of schools. Uh, one of the areas that is of concern, obviously, is the continued number of, uh, or increasing number of uh, fatalities as a result of COVID-19. In the province, we have lost um, uh, about 106 educators mm. 
uh, who have succumbed to COVID-19. And uh, 51 of that 106, it only happened in December, which uh, shows really that um, the second wave is upon us and is hitting us hard. And now we need to prepare to ensure that um, those teachers are replaced expeditiously so that on the first day of, of, of schooling, there is effective teaching and learning. And as I said, uh, says Flo, we are really hard at work to ensure that we prepare all the schools, including ensuring that um, all our schools are compliant with uh, the non-negotiables that uh, we agreed to uh, uh, insofar as the fight against COVID-19 is concerned. So we're confident that uh, by the time teachers return to schools on the 25th of January, everything will be will be will be sorted including the issues of ltsm and uh, the issues of uh, compliance with all the COVID 19 essentials making sure that uh, there is there is a teacher in front of each and every class so those are the detailed the preparations that uh, we're embarking on and uh, i must indicate uh, so that we're working even arbitrary hours including weekends to make sure that uh, by the time the school opens the province of KwaZulu Natal is ready. Let me drag you into a, a debate, uh, MEC. I mean, you're talking about the large number of teachers who have succumbed to, to, to COVID-19, which is certainly very scary uh, to look at uh, in terms of the South Africa as, as a whole, if we're to look at uh, the number of teachers who have uh, succumbed to COVID-19. Uh, now, you'd know that South Africa is getting the, the first uh, batch of the vaccine doses this month. Um, there is talk, of course, of the fact that the healthcare workers will be, as the frontline workers, will be the first to, to receive uh, the vaccine. Um, um, I had a conversation with uh, Teacher Union, my, my apologies, I just forgot which one. Um, we had a conversation earlier this week, and this particular Teacher Union was saying uh, that they believe that teachers should also be seen as almost frontline workers, and that they also should be counting as uh, part of the group that would be first in line to receive these vaccines along with the healthcare uh, workers what is your view what what do you think about that and and and, and would you would you support uh, uh, the teacher unions if they were you know to push for this as it is set to be going uh, to, to to government as something that they'd, they'd like to have discussed you, you know sis flow <clears throat> teachers are nation builders they are a foundation for any successful nation because there is no nation that can succeed with an illiterate population. And for you to defeat illiteracy, you need educators, you need teachers. So in our view, they constitute the most important um, a group of society, which you can't do without. Uh, you can't build a, a successful nation without educators. So while they are not uh, declared as essential workers in terms of the, of the statutes, but in terms of our theoretical understanding, they constitute that part of essential workers. So I will really support um, a view that says amongst the first group of people who must receive uh, vaccines should be educators. Because um, remember, as we fight COVID-19, we still need to build the future. There will be future beyond COVID-19. So we can't pretend as if um, we need to to, to be oblivious of how the future will look like beyond uh, COVID-19. So while we agree that uh, the health workers should be amongst those who, uh, who, are different, who are at the front line and who must receive the vaccine first, but also the, the, the nation builders, the educators must also be amongst the first grouping of the people who will receive the vaccination, the vaccines, so that we can continue with an uninterrupted system of schooling and continue to produce results that are necessary for the country's success. All right, Emi Simshengo, a pleasure having you here with us on SABC News this afternoon. Thank you for your time, sir. Thanks for having me.